good. No, that's so so. It's so good. It. I, I want to. I will. I will let uh, Crystal wrap us up with this question. But I, I will just say that if your mind wasn't powerful, there wouldn't be billions of dollars going into trying to distract it. And yes. you know yes. what I mean. Yes. So that's just a little bit of of food for thought. I remember I went through one of the challenging periods of my time very shortly, um, and. Literally, I remember going for a jog. I had just got out of the hospital, and I was just going for a jog. And it was the first time I was able to actually physically run. This is like seven years ago. I actually was just, I think I was, I could just finish college. I don't want to age myself, but it's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. Um, it was early 2000s. Everybody was doing it. And um, I remember thinking to myself, I'm going to be a superhero. And I, would start, I said, I'm going to start introducing myself like that. And people would laugh at me. And I, had, I wasn't even graduated acting class yet. And people would be like, you don't even have a regular job. Are you going to be a superhero, you know? And... <laughs> I didn't know how it's going to happen. I think that's what messes up us up a lot of times. We try to figure out the how, but it's about the belief. And when you put that frequency out there, everything mm-hmm. else just aligns. So uh, we definitely felt your passion. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with all of us. Crystal? Yeah. Um, I also believe in the law of attraction and, yeah. and putting it out there because I've actually done it. <laughs> um, I was... You know, I guess it was easier for me when I was younger because I was just so, you know, your mind is so excited to yes. make it in Hollywood and you're going to do it. Yeah, manifestation isn't as strong for me right now. But back in the day, um, I, I remember just envisioning myself in yeah. like this action movie yeah. as well. And it was really fun because I, I remember when I booked Anaconda 3 and 4, I was in Romania and I was standing there and I'm like, I just, I was standing in the forest and we were waiting, you know, for action. And I just thought to myself, oh my God, I have visualized this entire scenario right now. Mm -hmm. I literally was like, I envisioned the cameras. I envisioned the, the action of it, the running, the kicking, the fighting, and, and just take, you know, taking on the snakes. You know, I didn't really, I didn't manifest any snakes, but they were, they were and there wasn't any snakes on the set, by the way. There was not what? one snake. I'm done. Mind it was blown. all, they yeah, hire a giant all CGI. Anaconda. Yeah. So yeah, no snakes. Um, but yeah, and I, and I just think that we all need to create outside of acting as well, you know? Like, I love to cook. I love to dance on TikTok. I'm doing mocktails because I stopped drinking a year and a half ago. You know what I mean? Like, we all have to have our hobbies, and that's what keeps us sane. Because if we don't have hobbies and you're just solely relying on acting, then it's it's up and down. You know, it is up and down. So, but power in the manifestation, absolutely. Oh, I love doubling down on that. One of my mentors always says, it's not we're not human doings, we're human beings, right? Mm -hmm. So it's so important to have like a full life. You said something so cool. You said that when you were in, where where were you on location for Anaconda when you had this moment? Bucharest. (laughs) Wow. So, and can I ask where are you from originally? Because I read it in your bio, but I didn't get to see that. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm originally Canadian. Okay. But I was born in the States, but raised in Canada. So I have Mm. dual citizenship. But, um, yeah, I got that when I, I booked it from here, from L.A. So, so that I was do a like, lot of Canadian production as well. So so yeah. that was like a surreal moment for you where everything yeah. just landed and you had that yeah, stillness cool. where you're yeah. like, everything, this is this is everything I had e- Everything I had in my mind. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I did the vision board. Yeah. And then I did, you know, the I would put music on. I don't know if you guys try this, but I would put my favorite uh, manifesting songs. or uh-huh. I, <laughs> At the time, I think I was listening to Nat King Cole and... Barbara Streisand. Uh, don't ask me why, but that one song where she do you why sings, not? it's like, <laughs> right? right? I mean, if I it touches Streisand. your heart, and yeah. it's and Elvis too. Yes. Elvis oh, always touches my heart. Yes. So yeah, I love it. So yeah. I'm just curious because I think this is such a a beautiful point. And, and what I love about Comic-Con is that it really is a place where you can go into that childlike joy. So I want to just actually pose an impromptu question to the rest of the panel in the, the same spirit of what you just shared, Crystal. Did any of you have a moment like Crystal's moment where you were like, this is happening. This is like, I'm really doing this. Because sometimes in this industry, especially when you're coming in a certain time and you have to work so hard in general, but especially being a woman in this before social media and all that, you're just going, you're just trying to get in the door. And then once you're in, you just want to do a good job. But was there a moment much like Crystal's moment where you're like, this is everything I thought, or, you know, was it for you and you were like, well, you've been like in the million Avengers, but like, <laughs> what was that? I know for me, it was when I got to work with, um, rest in peace, my big brother and mentor, Jason David Frank mm-hmm. and Ninjack. And um, 
and to be able to play a superhero after telling people that I would, and they were like, you don't have no job. And <laughs> I had a job, and I was actually getting paid. But I'm like, I'm getting played to play pretend with one of my icons. Mm. That moment for me was like a moment. Did it, what was? Did any of you have a, a moment like that? Do you, you want to go, and then we'll, we'll work our way down. I have a moment. I, have I a can't moment. stop. Okay. Like, no, no, no. I have something to say. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, when you work with the Marvel things, it's like, I am the moment. No, <laughs> I'm dying. Okay, so, so, um, so the moment you guys are gonna appreciate this. So the moment that I was like, "Yo, this is it," was when I was at the. Um, the, I believe, don't quote me, I think it's Bill Hargrave, but at the costumes house where I had to go, I had to drive to the costume house for the first Black Panther because I was getting my own, emphasizing my own costume. That was the moment because I was like, Marvel's on the vision board. I've been praying about this. I've been putting it out to the universe. I've been walking as if it's gonna happen. And they're like, hey, you know, after the emails, you've booked this, you're Dora Milaje, you're a part of the Elite Eight. That's what they called us, Finding Dora Elite Eight. And um, I'm going to the costume and they're taking my measurements for my costume. And I think they'll understand the importance of this because sometimes if you're, you know, you don't, not even sometimes. You don't have your own costume. If you're doubling, you're sharing something, it's not for you, but this was for me. It had my name on every tag. And I was like, this is it. From my socks, I had my name on the tag, on the shoe, of the bottom of the shoe, my jewelry, my neck piece. No one else puts on my neck piece but me. And so that was very powerful. And it was that moment of like, You've done it. This hard work has paid off. The persistence, the dedication, the prayers, the tribe, I, I, squad, tribe, whatever you want to call it, the support was there. And I felt like it was a win for everybody that was connected to me, for everybody. And then the other moment was when I met Mr. Forrest Whitaker. That man is so regal. I'm going to leave you all with that. But, yeah, those, those were my two moments when, when I had that meeting with the costumes and wardrobe and they're taking my measurements. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's so special. That was yeah. your moments. Cause in my mind I was like, was it when you were fighting with everybody yeah. on the <laughs> battlefield and all the other Avengers? But that's just me being weird. Um, <laughs> Jolene and Gigi, do you have want to share your moments? Oh, I'd love to hear. Um, so I have, I have had a lot of those moments. Um, <laughs> and I, th and I just want to touch, you know, um, like we work so hard. Uh, it doesn't matter how many movies you've been in or how many things like, if you're not in the, you have no idea that what we go, like, you know, like when you get a job and you feel like you've made it, it's like tears. You're like all that hard work, all that determination, all those sacrifices, listing everyone's BS all the time. Um, and then you're standing there and you're just like, <sighs> I'm in this mood, you know, and, um, and that is such a powerful feeling. And it's really just comes from your hard work and sacrifice and you achieving something. Um, I felt that, you know, when I made my very first film, like right out of acting class at like 27, I um, was finally in a feature film and it was shooting in Montana and it was this dreamy, um, big epic bears and cowboys and blah, blah, blah. And I was the lead and I was terrified because I was like, can I carry a film? Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do this, but I was like, it's like I had achieved everything at like 27. I was like, this is what my dream was. I wanted, because my happy place is being on location shooting a movie. That's all I want in life. Um, someone else is paying for your travel. Uh, you're in the woods. It's, it's, everyone else is in charge. You just have to show up and do one job and enjoy yourself, right? Um, so I was like, wow, I'm, I'm here. I've made it. I'm shooting this feature and I'm getting paid and it's all beautiful and that was one of those moments and then maybe five or six years later you know as you're doing the hustle and you're going to like 50,000 auditions a day and some of them are bullshit and some of them are awesome and you're running out of time and you're like well how much money is it and can I get there on time and I ended up just haphazardly making it to that one last dumb audition for some <laughs> short film for 300 bucks a day I was like that was a lot of money 300 bucks a day for a short film. So I was like, I'll just go. Um, and I booked it. And then, um, and this is again, just the director was nobody. He'd never done anything. He reached out to, I don't know if anyone here um, knows who Julian Sands is. Is anyone old enough to love Julian Sands as much as I did? 
Thank you. Uh, he was always one of my favorite actors. As I was growing up, Julian Sands was it, right? It was I came from that kind of world um, where anything that he did was amazing. Boxing Helena was my favorite movie, you know. So um, he was like, uh, "Hey, so you're uh, you're the other guy in the movie with you? His name's Julian Sands." And I was like. I'm Sorry, what? Uh, and he was like, yeah, it's Julian. So this guy who was like nobody, making this little short film for not a lot of money, just had the balls to send this script to Julian's agent. Julian's a movie star. He's not, you know, um, he just had the balls to send him the script. I can't imagine he paid him very much, but Julian took the job. Yeah. And there I was, starring in a film mm -hmm. across from my hero. Yeah. And I was like... You know, I was like, this is what I lived for. This is what I dreamt about. That was like the greatest moment of my life. Um, and then, you know, we have more of those, right? Yeah. And then like, yeah, then you do the work with Marvel and you're like, oh, I'm working with... And I have to say, it was a Marvel story, actually. I just did a vid video game for the, the Avengers video game. And like, again, the happy place where you're like, I've put all of this passion and all of this time and I've worked so hard and there's been so many tears. And then there you are, we're on set in the thing, we're doing the mocap and they're like rewriting the script while you're there, you know, and we're all working on it together. There's this amazing collaboration with all these people and you're in that vortex of creation and this is a serious project that's going out into the world and then you feel that magical light take over and you're like, there it is again, oh my God. Like this is the happiest place on earth. So anyway, that was three times. But it happens a lot whenever no, you just feel like you've accomplished This something. is good stuff, though. I love that you're going into so much detail because, again, if you've never experienced these things, mm -hmm. you just don't know. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So we feel the energy and we support you. And we, we actually, I believe, like, I love sitting up here next to you guys. I'm like, yeah, give me some of that. I want some of that energy. <laughs> so thank you for sharing. So does that everyone? Um, so you guys know Rick and Morty. Yes. So... Justin Roiland, one of the creators, uh, he there was two characters on Farscape, uh, Virginia Hay and Claudia Black, and they were roles in one of their one of their cartoons. So I just got on Twitter and I posted, "Hey, Justin Roiland," and it was the cat filing its nails, like waiting for the phone call, kind of thing. And then I forgot about it, you know. I just did it like as a joke. And then like months went by, and it was Christmas Day. And I was in Florida, and I don't even know why, but I checked my Twitter messages, and he'd responded within half an hour. Oh. But this is now, like, months later. Oh. And it's Christmas Day. And he goes, yeah, I would love to work with you. Give me a call. So I call him on Christmas Day. Wow. <laughs> and wake him up because he's in L.A. Uh -huh. And he's like, uh, uh, hello. I'm like, Justin, oh, my God, it's Shishi Angeli. I just got your message. I'm not really a B-I-T-C-H. I'm so sorry. I don't check my messages. He goes, you realise it's Christmas, right? And I was like, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like really early in the morning. I'm like, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I just voiced three of his characters yes. in the new um, video game that's coming out December 13th, which is Skywalker's birthday. So that's all oh, kind of weird. Oh, um, and another fun teeny tiny little moment, w moment which was super cool is like all of us, the highs are super high but we definitely have some super challenging lows and it's all about you know, building your character and staying in the love and light and putting what you want out into the universe. And um, I was street performing with my partner at the time. He rode a 12-foot unicycle and I fire spun. And we literally would go into a show with no money and go, hopefully, we'll be able to eat tonight. And that existence lasted for a good couple of years. Then I got a phone call from my agent saying they want to see you in the room for Rescue Special Ops. It was an audition I'd done months, like four months ago. And I'm like, which one's that? So I went to Australia, I auditioned, we got the role, ended up being the lead on this amazing series. They trained us up abseiling, rock climbing, yeah. all the stunts, all the medical. And my very first sort of episode where, where I was the leading lady, but it was, you know, the guy always gets a bit more. So for the second episode, it was my <laughs> starring episode kind of thing. And um, it was a scene where I was talking an adrenaline junkie off uh, off the side of not jumping off the centre point, which is the tallest city, uh, the tallest building in Sydney City. So the scene is like, no, no, don't jump, don't jump. And I go to get him and he base jumps down safely and I end up hanging off over the side of the building. 
So I'm there with the director and the other actor, the adrenaline junkie and the, the other lead of the show and we're going up into Centre Point and there's like the buffet restaurant that spins around and all that kind of stuff and I'm like, where are the cameras? They're like, it's fine, just we'll go through the scene, whatever else. So we do the scene and I'm like, where are the cameras? And he goes, trust me, just go into the scene. And so we go into the scene and we're doing it all, you know, the fall, the everything. A helicopter comes around and there's a camera guy hanging outside of the oh helicopter. I'm like, there's the camera. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm back. Oh my God. Yeah. So wow. it's all that, isn't it? It's the roller coaster yeah. ride and being yeah. thankful for all, every part of that yes. ride. Oh, these are such good stories. Don't you guys feel like the nostalgia vibes are just, just like so inspiring? Let's give all these ladies a round of applause. Thank you. Um, so initially I had two more questions, but I'm all about this is a team sport and you guys are teammates. And I wanted to open up the floor before we go. We have a few minutes left to see if there's any questions. Is that a hand raise or is that like I'm over this? Okay. 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 It, was, it, it wasn't up. It was just like, mm. okay. You said, and the red glasses with the hand up. <laughs> Yes. Well, I will answer that, and I will pay, slip you that five for saying I'm charming. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I want to play Storm straight up. I love being Livewire. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I was born to play Storm. I'm very grateful to be the first person to play Livewire like live action. I want that uh, Harbinger role, too, which is a Livewire movie. But um, Storm, to me, was the only person. There would be no Livewire if there wasn't Storm. And I think she needs a standalone movie, and I'm the woman for the job. So that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you. Okay, I receive it. Yes. <laughs> I know firsthand about Sierra um, playing Storm. So yes, I'm I'm Team Sierra being Storm. Um, me. So a role that I would love to play would be I'm the lead in an action movie, <laughs> and it would star. You know, my co-leads would be like Morgan Freeman, um, Jack Nicholson, um, and then it would have to be directed, written, and produced by either J.J. Abrams or M. Night Shyamalan. Like those, that's my thing right now. So um, y'all make it happen. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it definitely I would be like a, the lead action, super awesome lead actress, female, Shiro, you know, yeah. And I need those as my co-leads, yeah. And I'm here for it, thank mm -hmm. you. You're like Great question, fan. Danny. You're like a manifesting machine. I feel like we're gonna be here two years ago, like, so how did it feel to yeah. be the lead? Oh 